The first thing I want to show you guys is the ocean temperature anomalies throughout the northern Atlantic because as you clearly see, it's much warmer than average right over the main development region, which not only will play a big role in terms of how many storms are going to see in the Atlantic that could, of course, enhance the chance that you're going to get impacted by a tropical cyclone along the coast, but it could also play a role in determining how, um, in, in determining where exactly these tropical cyclones will go. And what I mean by that is that right over the Bermuda area, there's simply a Bermuda Azores high. And when we see sea surf temperatures cooler than average, and that means the uh, ridge is more likely to be stronger than usual. And as you could see, the sea surf temperatures right over Bermuda are closer to average, if not but slightly below average, which uh, makes me fear that the ridge that's right over Bermuda is going to be more stronger than usual thanks to the amount of sinking air cooler sea surf temperatures would promote and sinking air is associated with very strong rigid um, ridges so that would certainly um, strengthen the ridge to a point where we could potentially see storm systems move a lot further westward this hurricane season if this ridge ends up being stronger than usual and right now it's looking very concerning because th um, th these cooler sea surf temperatures will certainly enhance the amount of sinking air over here and force a lot of storm systems a little bit further westward and it's going to be combined with the fact that we're going to be in a hyperactive hurricane season most likely as all the most reliable computer models are suggesting that we're going to be in for a very active hurricane season. And one of the big reasons why is due to the fact that we're going to be in a strong La Nina by the time we approach the hurricane season. So this is where we stand when it comes to sea surf temperature anomalies right over the Nino 3.4 region um, as of around mid-April to um, early May. We clearly see that we aren't necessarily in a La Nina yet, but look at the forecast. Sea surf temperatures are quickly cooling down throughout the um, um, equatorial Pacific and by the time we approach more active months of the hurricane season August and into September that's when we should see the La Nina um, pattern peak to where we're going to be in a strong La Nina and that's going to coincide with much warmer than average sea surf temperatures and that will of course enhance the possibility you're going to get impacted by a tropical cyclone no matter where you are in the Atlantic. And the key thing to point out associated with La Nina's is not only the fact that more tropical cyclones develop, but we see less of a strong westerly upper level flow, which means that storm systems are more likely to move further westward without being deterred by stronger wind shear that would be more associated with a neutral or El Nino pattern during the hurricane season. So the weaker upper level winds will allow storm systems to move further westward. So places like Texas, Mexico, and pretty much the entirety of, of Central America could could get in more impacted or have a higher possibility of getting impacted by tropical cyclones this hurricane season with um, weaker westerly winds and pretty much the Gulf Coast in general um, and the entirety really of the coast but more specifically the areas a lot further westward closer to Central America as well as Texas Louisiana are more likely to get impacted um, at least relative compared to let's say the east coast of the United States and the Caribbean because while those areas will of course have a higher chance of hurricane landfalls during a La Nina it's more pronounced a little bit further westward the chance um, so you definitely need to be aware of that throughout Central America as well as the Gulf of Mexico these maps clearly show what I'm talking about as we see um, during um, La Nina's in the past 30 years. We see much more hurricanes move a lot further westward impacting the Gulf Coast and we even see some hurricanes impacting the East Coast as well. But during an El Nino pattern we see a stark difference not only when it comes to the amount of hurricanes that develop but more so where exactly they move towards where we see a lot less hurricanes move towards the west impacting the United States, the Caribbean, as well as maybe portions of Mexico and Central America as it's a lot more rare for an El Nino hurricane to move this far to the west but during La Nina's it's very common to see hurricanes move this far west. Another thing I want to show you guys is a geopotential height anomaly that's forecasted from one of the more reliable climatology models, the CAN-SIPS model, which combines a lot of different um, accurate 
um, computer models to generate one model so this gives the most accurate result relative to other climatology models and as we could clearly see there's going to be a strong amount of ridging just to the north of the main development region which is a big concern because this will more likely be able to steer storms a lot further westward so the chance of hurricane and tropical storm impacts along the southeast including the east coast as well as the caribbean and central america should definitely increase with the increase um in the amount of ridging right over the northern atlantic and it's just to the north of the main development region so a lot of these tropical cyclones will have an open lane to continue to move further westward now let's take a look at the precipitation anomalies as well because that could give a good indication of where a lot of these storm systems will move towards um because of course the areas with higher precipitation we could assume that more tropical cyclones would be able to move where it's a bit more humid and it's also very concerning here as well because look at um the areas that are expected to receive much more precipitation than usual it's all over the main development region all over the caribbean and this extends into portions of the southeast as well which makes me believe a lot of hurricanes will track sort of towards this direction so the caribbean you definitely need to pay very close attention as it's highly likely you're going to at least experience some sort of tropical cyclone landfall within a 50 mile radius same goes for central america and a lot of the southeast as well and here's a quick look at what all of the um forecast um, models as well as some of the um universities are stating when it comes to the forecast amount of tropical cyclones this hurricane season and this is certainly very concerning we clearly see it's unanimous that we're going to see a um, hyperactive hurricane season amongst um um based on the predictions of all of these um computer models as well as weather centers so you definitely need uh, to be prepared in case the tropical cyclone does move close to your area because it's certainly more likely this hurricane season and look at how high these forecasts are i've in my years covering the weather i've never seen the amount of named storms this um forecast this high during the hurricane season especially this early in the year where the hurricane season hasn't even started even the um even in um hurricane seasons prior that were expected to be active usually stay just below the 20 um, um tropical cyclone mark to stay conservative but it seems like the uh, um all of these um computer models are forecasting that the um we're going to be well over the 20s as it's going very extreme with its um with the amount of named storms it wants to forecast this hurricane season so you definitely want to be prepared so i created the probability of a tropical cyclone uh, map using the um, university of colorado's forecast when it comes to the probability that each area will experience a tropical cyclone impacting their area within a 50 mile radius so let's go through these um 78 percent for alabama um of course there are certainly a lot of things that could change as we approach a hurricane season but definitely take um but definitely um be prepared for a much higher chance of a tropical cycle making landfall in your area this hurricane season and taking a look at even the hurricane impacts for a place like alabama it's quite high 28 percent Florida, 56%. Of course, there are um, subcategories where it is listing more individual areas where the chance is lower if you go towards more individual areas. But as a, for a state as a whole, a 56% chance, uh, there's a 56% chance a uh, hurricane will impact Florida um, this hurricane season and close to a 30% chance of a major hurricane. So this is quite high compared to average. So all throughout um, the Atlantic coast, you need to be aware of this. So here's the probability a tropical cyclone should impact each area of the United States and other countries as well um, towards Central America and the Caribbean. So let's start for um, as far north as possible. There's a 70% chance a tropical cyclone will move within a 50 mile radius between um, right around the eastern coast of Canada, which isn't too uncommon to see a tropical cyclone because um, in those areas because you guys do pop out um, right in the middle of the Atlantic. So it is relatively high each year but certainly much higher this specific year of course thanks to a more active than usual hurricane season that expected and more hurricanes more likely to move further westward to impact on um, the east coast so definitely be aware of that 
right around the east coast of Canada. 35% um, in Maine and New Hampshire. Of course, it's very difficult for a tropical cyclone to move in sort of this direction. So the chance is lower for a tropical cyclone to be um, in your area, but still it's relatively high um, compared to average. 45% in the tri-state area, right around the New York City metropolitan area, as well as the Boston metropolitan area of a tropical cyclone, impacting you guys within a 50 mile radius. So definitely prepare for that. Definitely much higher than usual. Typically it's closer to a 30% or even 20% chance for the tri-state area. So definitely be aware of that in New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, and other areas as well. Virginia, it's a much higher 68% chance because of course it's not uncommon for a tropical cyclones to move in this um, um, towards Virginia before eventually they move to the east thanks to the strong westerly winds but a 68% that's quite high so definitely be prepared in case of a tropical cyclone moving through your area. 86% chance for North Carolina, which is highly likely. So you definitely need to be prepared. 76% for South Carolina, 96% for Florida. So it's almost guaranteed you're going to at least experience some sort of tropical cyclone moving um, right over the state of Florida, or at least within 50 miles of Florida. 78% chance for Mississippi and Alabama. Um, it is a little bit more difficult for um, a tropical cyclone to move within 50 miles of these states, thanks to how small the coast is for both Alabama and Mississippi, but still um, higher. Uh, it's still highly likely that it's going to happen, just not as high as Florida. And then right around an 80 and 84% chance for Louisiana and Texas. And of course, that chance is much higher, thanks to the fact that we're in the La Nina, so storms will move further westward. Now, let's move. Um, further southward outside of the United States, we have Metsco, a 92% chance, which, which makes sense. Look at how large Metsco's um, coast is, as well as the fact that this hurricane season will be hyperactive, so it's highly likely for you guys to receive impacts. Around a 60% chance for Belize, not as high thanks to the small coastline, but you, it's certainly more likely than not you will um, get hit by a tropical cyclone. 83% chance for Honduras, 53% chance um, for Nicaragua. And then even for southward into Panama and Costa Rica, it does lower to 9% chance. It's very rare for a tropical cyclone in any given year to move that far southward, but it is higher than usual. 80% chance for the Dominican Republic, 60% chance for Puerto Rico, and around 68% chance for Jamaica, and a 92% chance for Cuba. So this is my entirety of the forecast. If you want even more in detail forecast regarding the possibility of a tropical cyclone, Cone moving um, right over your area in your specific location, um, right around a 50 mile radius. Just make sure to comment down below your specific location if you're interested, and I'll make do my best to try to answer you guys regarding the probability you're gonna experience a tropical cyclone this year in your specific area. But remember, um, whether the chance is high or low for your area, just remember that all it takes is one storm to completely devastate the community and change the lives of millions of people. So don't underestimate any tropical cyclone um, just because um, just because maybe the hurricane season didn't reach your expectation. So definitely um, keep that in mind as we approach a hurricane season. But that's it for now, guys. And I thank you guys for watching.